When we built our 2019 Mustang GT Smoke Show for the SEMA show back in 2018 for the Ford display, we wanted the car to be functional. Now there's a lot of SEMA builds that are just beautiful cars but don't actually get used. But with this car, we wanted to do exactly what we built it for. And this car has been autocrossed, road trip, roll raced, and most of all, it has been drifted. During that time, we put over 12,000 miles of abuse on this car, and the factory clutch is starting to show signs of slipping out. 12,000 miles and all those clutch kicks, it owes us absolutely nothing, but it's time for an upgrade. So today we're gonna install a new clutch and flywheel from Ram Clutches. This is the Ram Concept 10.5 dual disc clutch setup, along with the Ram built aluminum flywheel. Now this clutch will fit your 2011 and up Mustang GT, now, if you are putting on a 2018 through 2020 Mustang GT, you will need the flywheel as well for the clutch assembly to work properly. Now, this is based off the Ram 900 series, and it's a 10.5 dual disc clutch. Now, the dual disc is going to be nice because it gives it a nice smooth engagement, but tons of power handling. This clutch is rated to 1,050 horsepower, probably more than this car is ever going to see. The aluminum flywheel is going to come in at only 26 pounds, so it's going to save us some rotating weight and also help with a much smoother engagement overall. Now this thing is almost too pretty to install, but it's going to do a great job being an upgrade for our Smoke Show Mustang. While we're in there, we're also going to upgrade the clutch line. The factory clutch line is plastic, which again, for high horsepower, high heat use, is definitely a bad idea. So we're going to place that with this UPR stainless steel piece, which will give our clutch a much better feel overall. So let's get started with the installation. All right, we have the car up in the air, we pop the exhaust off, and now Brendan's gonna walk you through the installation of our new Ram clutch. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this mid pipe and this full side exhaust on the passenger side. Grab a 15 millimeter socket, and then take some lube, spray it on there, and take a hammer and bang it off. So now we're on the passenger side exhaust, we actually have to remove the whole catalytic converter. There's two bolts, they're 15 millimeter. Also remember to remove your O2 sensor. You can get to the bottom bolt on this manifold, but then we'll have to go up top in the engine bay to get to the other side. Here we go, I gotcha. You will come loose. No children, this is not the way to take it off. Do not ever double wrench. To get to the top bolt of that flange, you're gonna need a lot of extensions, a swivel, and a big ass ratchet to get this thing loose. It takes a lot of pressure because it's rusted and tired out. Once you get that nut off, then we can pull the exhaust off. Now that our exhaust is off, we're actually gonna remove our starter. Remember to disconnect your battery before removing your starter. To remove the starter, you have to remove these two wires. That's a 10 millimeter and a 13. Then after you have the wires off, remove the three bolts that are 10 millimeter on the starter to the transmission. Pop the cap off, and then you can access the nut. Once you have all the bolts out, just pull the starter and it'll pop right out. All right, so we're gonna jump onto the dry shaft. We're gonna remove these six 10 millimeter bolts. Ah, it does work. Hey. Battery? No, thicker socket. Before removing your dry shaft, you should put a line across the flange and the dry shaft. So when you put it back in, that you know it's lined up and it's balanced perfectly. Remove the three 18 millimeter bolts off the flange to the rubber. Okay, the last thing we have to do is remove the two 13 millimeter bolts holding the center support bearing. Oops. 
Got it. Good. <laughs> Next, we're going to support our transmission with a pole jack and then remove our trans cross member. So there's two different ways you can take off this shifter. One, you can take the whole shifter assembly off with taking off your shift knob and then the trim bezel. But since our shifter knob will not come off, we're actually going to pull the linkages off the transmission. To remove the shifter linkages, you got to remove this 10 millimeter bolt, get that linkage out of the way, and then you can access this bolt on this linkage. I removed the two 10 millimeter bolts on the back of the shifter to give more room to get to the bottom bolt on the shifter linkage. Okay, now onto the wiring. We're gonna disconnect all the O2 sensors and all the sensors on the transmission, lay it over to the passenger side to get it out of the way to remove the transmission. Start with the O2s on the driver side, just push the clip in, pop it off, and then take a trim panel removal tool and pop it off the transmission. So once we get the transmission yeah. on it down, we get that last center. All right, so we switched out our pole jack for the transmission jack because we're ready to pull the bell housing bolts out. Grab a 13 millimeter socket and start removing them. So there's two bolts left on the front of the transmission holding the mid plate to the bell housing. They're 13 millimeter. Now that we have all the bell housing bolts off and we're ready to move the transmission, the last thing we have to do is remove the clutch line. To remove the clutch line, you pull this clip off, push the clutch line up, and be careful, some fluid will leak out, so I'll have a drip pan ready to go. And then you see it pops right off, leaking a little bit of fluid. And now you're ready to pull your transmission out. All right, so we've let the fluid drain out a bit. It's still dripping. To remove the transmission, all you do is you pull it back. Once you have it pulled off the transmission and out of the clutch, then just lower it down. I'm removing this O2 sensor just to give myself a little more room to get the transmission out of here. Use a 22 millimeter wrench to loosen the center. When pulling your transmission out, make sure your shifter linkages are out of the way. So there was one sensor that we could not show you with the camera. It's this sensor on top of the transmission. You pretty much have to lower it all the way down, pull the red clip out, push this clip in, and pull the clip off. To remove the pressure plate, there are six 10 millimeter bolts you have to remove. Remove the eight flywheel bolts, the T55. All right, now that we have the transmission out, the pressure plate and flywheel, we're actually gonna move on to the clutch line since we have all this room. We're gonna go up top, remove the old clutch line and put the new braided one in. Just like the bottom, there's just a clip right here. Pop the clip out and the line will come right off. 
Don't lose the clip. Don't get your screwdriver stuck. And then pull the line out. If I can get my hand in there. Since I have an extra long screwdriver, I'm just gonna use this to pop it off. Voila. Well, bringing those both lines off, here's another reason why we're actually changing out this line. The UPR line is gonna be stainless steel versus plastic for the factory line. Plus the line's a little bit larger, makes it much easier to install, but it'll do a much better job of keeping heat out of our clutch fluid. We're actually gonna tighten these fittings down on the line before installing it into the car. Just give it a good snug. You don't have to go crazy tight with them. Now we're ready to install. Once you have the line in place, push it down and push the clip in. Okay, so before I put the new flywheel on, I should clean the surface, all, all the dust, took some brake clean, make it look all nice. Now we can throw our new flywheel in. To put the flywheel in, you have to line the holes. It only can bolt on one way, so just circle all the way until all the holes line up. Put your factory bolts back in with some red Loctite, tighten them all down, and then torque them. Okay, okay. To torque down the bolts on the flywheel, it's a two-step process. It's 28 foot-pounds, then 90 degrees in a star pattern. So now the second step. We have to torque it down to 90 degrees. I have the snap-on torque wrench that shows the degrees I need to go to, and I have Bill holding the flywheel. Okay, one done. Now that the flywheel's torqued, we're gonna grab our first clutch disc, fly the alignment tool in. As you can see, the clutch disc is labeled flywheel size, so we'll match it up. Slide it in, and then grab your mid plate. Line up your bolt holes. Put a little red Loctite on the bolts and then we can tighten them down. Once you have all the bolts in place, Torque them down to 26 foot-pounds in a star pattern. Now that our mid plate's torqued down, grab your second clutch disc with the springs pointing out, put it in, and then grab your pressure plate. Now I always recommend on any of your flywheel or your clutch bolts, always put red Loctite on them because it is spinning at a fast speed. You do not want these bolts to come loose while you're driving.
Once you have the pressure plate in place and then slightly tightened down, torque it down to 26 foot-pounds. Okay. All right, now we have our ram flywheel and clutch assembly all bolted down on our engine. Now we can bolt our transmission back into place and put everything back in. All right, so now that we have everything back in place, the clutch line's on, we just added fluid back to our mass cylinder, it's bleeding the clutch. Start with by your hand because it's gonna fall right to the floor. So pump it by hand for a good five minutes. So you just push with your foot for another five, 10 minutes until you have good pressure on the pedal, and then test drive it in the air or on the ground. Another thing I wanna mention is once you get all the air out of the clutch and you have your clutch pedal feel back, you also wanna do a crank relearn. Anytime you change the clutch on an S550, you'll have to do that. If you have an SCT tuner, it's built right into the software. Brennan did a great job with insulation and Smoke Show's now ready to get back on the track. Now our new Ram clutch will have a nice soft pedal effort. Like I said, we'll hold over a thousand horsepower. Now these are metallic discs. So as far as the braking goes, you only get a few heat cycles on it. So some short drives just to get it hot and let it cool off and try to get a couple hundred miles on it before you actually beat on it. As far as insulation goes, you'll need basic hand tools. Give yourself about six to eight hours or so, and you'll be back on the road in no time.